Before we go further this morning, uh, I have the privilege of turning the mic over to somebody who's very important to me, and uh, that'd be my mom, uh, who you guys know as Pastor Joy. I just want to take this moment to honor her as really a hero in my life. As I mentioned, 36 hours of labor, bringing uh, this beautiful, uh, lovely human being into the world. Uh, people are like, how'd you get that big? I'm like, I don't know, but I wasn't this big when I was born. I was big when I was born, but not this big. Uh, but she's been there. She's been, uh, I just want to honor her this morning for her love, for her strength, and for her example of faith in my life. Uh, mom is a person that, uh, when I was a teenager, and teenage boys don't like to talk about stuff, and so she would keep asking and asking and asking and asking until I'd finally talk, which I really needed. I really appreciate that. And uh, she always had my back. You know, she shuttled me around town. And, you know, if somebody would happen to come to our house door and say, your son threw biting ants in my daughter's pool, you know, while this son was hiding in his closet, she would be at the door just saying, no way that my son could ever do anything like that. Or uh, an angry dad would come to the door, say, your son shot my kid in the back with a BB gun. No way. You know, she knew that such a thing would would never happen, and so she totally had my back, or when they were away on their anniversary for their 25th, and the police would call and say, your daughter has vandalized the neighbor's property, which would never happen, you know, mom would always be there to have our back, so... Uh, I know we were perfect kids, and maybe that made her job a lot easier, um, <laughs> but she is also an anointed woman of God who is bringing a word from him this morning, so... Without further ado, would you please honor my mom, Joy Hershey. <laughs> Thanks. You're a good son. I love you. <laughs> uh, just, uh, just in case some of you moms in here thought, I'm not sure I'm doing a good job. My kid did this or that or the other thing. Hang in there. Hang in there. God's got you. God's got you. And it's by his grace that our kids turned out to be as wonderful as we think they are and they're serving, <laughs> serving God and, you know, all of those uh, fictitious examples that he brought up <laughs> were not actually fictitious, they were actually true. <laughs> you know, as moms, we stick up for our kids no matter what, right, to a fault, actually to a fault because the red ants did really happen. Okay. <laughs> and so, but today... Uh, you know, a woman's touch in this world is a beautiful thing. And so thank you to all of the women who love and care and nurture the people that God brings into your life. We honor you today, and especially today we want to honor the moms that are in the room or that are with us uh, watching online. We want to honor you today. And as we do that, I want to just take a couple minutes and give a shout out to some of the hero moms that could be in our midst today. So I wanna give a shout out to all the moms whose kids are just learning to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I know your life is a mess, but it's gonna get better. To those moms who thought they had an empty nest, and then they came back, and now you're cooking for a tribe again. Shout out to you. Shout out to the moms whose teenagers cannot get enough to eat. Even though the cupboards are empty, we know you went grocery shopping. <laughs> and you will again, right? But shout out to all the working moms who are trying to do Zoom meetings when the kids are in the next room, the dogs are in the next room, the video games are playing, the doors are swinging open, and the kids are running in, and you're navigating all the interruptions. Shout out to you for all of that. Shout out to all the moms of kids with special needs. You're an inspiration, an inspiration to all of us. And a shout out to the women who love other people's kids as if they were their own. That's a special gift. Shout out to the homeschooling moms <laughs> who planned to be or who didn't plan to be <laughs> homeschooling moms. It's a big responsibility, and we want you to know we see you. We see you. We see what you're doing. And a shout out to all the moms who step up for their kids and for their kids' kids and for their kids' kids' kids. And you get the point. Shout out to all of you. So a shout out to all of the moms who live their faith every day. And keep a sense of humor through it all. 
<laughs> That's sometimes not the easiest thing, like with the fire ants incident. <laughs> Today, as you leave the place, we have some uh, succulent for you out there for you to take home. It is a live plant. And we want to thank Morgan for getting all of that together for us. Thank you, Morgan, for putting all that together. She created a beautiful display out there, and I see you have your mom with you today. Welcome. Good to see you. So as you look at that succulent plant that you take home today, I want you to just think about how resilient they are, how beautiful they are. The succulents, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but they're all beautiful. And that's what you are today. So I just want to give all you moms a shout out today. You're precious, and we hope you, you feel valued and encouraged today. All right, we love you. Um, then, in case you guys were wondering if we were going to do all mothers all day, <laughs> I do have a message to bring you from the Word of God this morning. So let's pray as we kind of take a little turn in our service today. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to be together, together with your people, mostly together with you, because you said where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. And we thank you for your presence here. We honor you most of all as the most important one in the room. Lord, we treasure your presence. We treasure the moving of your spirit and we thank you for your word that brings light and understanding to us. Hallelujah. We give you glory and honor today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay. I want you to loosen up a little bit because I'm going to need your help with the message this morning, okay? Somebody said, life is too short. Church should be fun. <laughs> so, you know, just loosen up a little bit. Don't get too stiff and all of that. I'm not going to ask you to do anything hard in case that scared you a little bit. Nothing hard. Hey, if I say 007, what does that mean to you? James Bond. James Bond. Yes. And uh, so I've seen a few James Bond movies in my time and none really lately. We found them to be not super godly or <laughs> whatever. But anyway, I've seen several of them. And um, so is that song going through anybody's head? There it is, there it is, James Bond. So there's a famous line that is, I think, in most all of the movies, and it has to do with when, and don't judge me for this, okay, but when he orders his martini. Now, I am not a drinker, but this is a line from the movie. So he orders his drink, and does anybody know how he orders his drink? Shaken, not stirred, okay? So, but today... We're going to flip the script, and we're going to say, uh, we're not going to order a drink. <laughs> we're going to order our lives. Amen. Okay? So we're going to flip the script, and we're going to be stirred, not shaken. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is how I'm going to need your help throughout the message this morning. So if you have your Bible with you or your Bible app, why don't you turn there to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we're going to start there this morning. I'll give you just a second to open your app or whatever you have to do to get to 2 Timothy 1. Get out your pen if you need it, your highlighter if you need it. You can always highlight with, your, with a click on your app. Okay, 2 Timothy 1, 6 says this. And it's the Apostle Paul, and he's writing to Timothy, who is kind of his protege. And he says this to him. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Okay, so the Apostle Paul's saying, well, number one, you have a gift on the inside of you. And you in this room have a gift on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And so what the Apostle Paul is saying to him, and really what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today, is that he wants us to stir up the gift that is on the inside of us. As I was getting ready uh, the other day, uh, it's been a, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago, getting ready, minding my own business, and these words came floating up to me from the Holy Spirit, stirred, not shaken. I was like, why does that kind of sound familiar? Then that's why I realized it was 
that James Bond thing stuck in my head, but stirred, not shaken. And so the apostle Paul is saying to Timothy, hey, you have a gift on the inside of you, but you need to do something with it. You need to stir it up. Stir up the gift that is on the inside of you. So when he says stir it up, this word here, when he's talking about stirring, I know, I guess it's because I cook. I, I think stir a pot, you know, something like that. Somebody else might think stir the cream in your coffee, you know, stirring like that. But what this word actually is talking about is fanning a flame, reigniting a flame. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. And that's what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. He wants us to reignite the flame of the gift that is on the inside of us so that it can have, we can have a roaring fire on the inside of us and bless the lives of the people around us. If Timothy need reminded, needed reminded to stir up the gift on the inside of him, likely we need reminded to stir up the gift on the inside of us too. We can let the those flames die down a little bit. We can just get into, you know, chill mode a little bit sometimes. But God doesn't want us to be in chill, cheer mode because he's got people he wants to reach in this world. And he's not going to do it by coming back down. Jesus isn't coming back down from his place in heaven to go and preach. He's sending you and he's sending me and he's using us with the gifts that he placed on the inside of us. There's a great work to be done. And so God put gifts and callings on the inside of each and every one of us that he wants to use. So we don't want to let them die down. You know, if you've built a fire, maybe you have a fireplace or a fire pit and you've built a fire. My husband used to love to build a fire when we lived out in the country. And I always thought he was going to burn the trees up. <laughs> the leaves off the trees, it seemed like the bigger it was, the happier he was. <laughs> Let's get some, go get some more branches. We'll throw those on there too. And it would be just, you know, roaring fire out there. But it didn't stay that way. Because over time, the things that we threw in the fire, they burned up and the fire began to die down. It became just those embers. And then pretty soon it was that ashy dust over the top. And that's where some of our gifts have kind of fallen into, kind of the, under the ashy dust. But God doesn't want our gifts to be like that, right? He wants to get out the billows. Have you ever seen billows? How many of you have seen billows? Okay, so most of you know what I'm talking about. Kind of an accordion-looking thing with handles on them, and it produces air when you squeeze it. <laughs> Blows off all the ashes, right, and provides air so that that fire can start again. Well, God wants to get out the billows, right? And he wants us to get out the billows and begin to stir up the gifts that are on the inside of us because God has a purpose for your life. And he wants you to fulfill that purpose. It's a beautiful purpose. But you're not going to be able to fulfill it if you're not using the gifts that he put in your life. Hallelujah. So the world may be saying, sit down and shut up. <laughs> But God's not saying that. He's saying, stir up, rise up, fire up. That's what God's saying today. Stir up the gift that is within you. We need to fan that flame so that it comes back. It bursts back into, into flames. And then we add more kindling to that fire so that it uh, starts burning again. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for us. We need to remind ourselves that he made a way for us to be his children. We need to remind ourselves how good he is. And even doing that begins to stir things on the inside of us. We remind ourselves that, God, you are the way maker, the miracle worker, right? The light in the darkness, that's who our God is. And we need to remind ourselves who he is so it starts to fan that flame on the inside of us. You know what? We need to never be shaken by this world. So can we say it together? Stirred, not shaken. Can we say it together? This is where I need your help. Stirred, not shaken. See, that wasn't too hard. I knew you could do it. All right. You know, there were some times last year, and I don't know if you're tired of people talking about 2020, but 
We're still kind of in the midst of just emerging out of all that's been happening. But, you know, last year, I definitely had some days that I said to my husband, I'm not doing well. I'm just not doing well. I was feeling like I was beginning to shake a little bit, you know. There was, there's just so much going on, all the lies and half-truths and innuendos and conspiracies and quarantines and masks and the blatant immorality and everything that we were hearing and seeing and all of that just was getting to me. It was getting to me. I wasn't really doing so well. And at times like that, I'm so glad to be saved. I'm so glad to know the Lord. Because when we look out into the world and if we're grasping for, well, what can I believe and what can I stand on and what can, what can I, you know, put my feet on that I can stand on in this world, I can tell you we can't find it out there. It's not out there. We've got to go running back to the Lord because he is the rock. He is the cornerstone. He's the only stability that we can find in this world. But when we do, we will not be shaken. He keeps us from being unshaken. You know, you've probably seen, how many of you have seen earthquake movies? Shirley? Oh, that's it? Seriously? Okay. How many of you have ever been in an earthquake? Some of you. I've been in a tiny one. A tiny one in El Salvador. Just, yeah. Some of our friends came running out of the room and this is a side point. It doesn't really, it's not in my notes. But we were doing this pastor's wife's conference in El Salvador, and they had this little earthquake. And so there was a team of us women, and one of the women came running out of her room and ran to the leader's room, which she was an experienced Central American. And she said, oh, oh, don't worry unless the lights start to really swing. <laughs> okay, okay. That's, that's the point you start to worry when the lights, okay, I get it. <laughs> go back to sleep, it's all good. Anyway, why don't you go in your Bibles to Psalm 16. We're going to start in verse 7. This happens to be in the New Living Translation, so if you have your app, you might switch over there. It says, I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. Wow, what a beautiful scripture. What a beautiful promise and insight that we can see in this particular scripture. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken. And if you're wondering, how can I not be shaken? How do I keep from being shaken? Know that the Lord is always with you. That's going to cause you to be so much more stable in your life. You won't be shaken by, because we get shaken when we think, well, what about this? And what about that? And what if this? And what if that? And maybe this? And maybe that? Ah, 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 ah. We get shaken. We start to wobble. We start to totter. <laughs> What's going to happen next? That's the thoughts that are going through our mind. But when we say, it's all good, God, you're with me. You're with me. You're with me. No matter what happens, God, you are with me. And look at Psalm 112 then. It's another scripture, similar scripture. Psalm 112, we're going to start in verse 5. It says, a good man deals graciously and lends. Well, that's beautiful right there. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely, he will never be, what? Shaken. Never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast. How? Trusting in the Lord. So, you know, 
the point of this scripture is that when we are trusting in the Lord for our lives, for our safety, for our future, that he's going to keep us and he's going to be there for us and give us everything that we need. When we have our trust in the Lord, then no matter what comes, we can be stable. We can have peace. We don't have to be shaken. He's there for us. So we're going to, shaking happens when we aren't trusting the Lord in the situation, right? And no condemnation to anybody. I think we've all had our moments of, where'd God go? <laughs> right? <laughs> God, why didn't you? When things don't turn out the way we think they are supposed to, or they don't look like they're going in the right direction, right? We can, we can lose our trust. And when we begin to say, well, God, where's God? You know? Where'd God go? I thought he was going to. And I'm not condemning anybody because I think we've all been there in one way or another. But those are the times when we begin to shake and we need to get our eyes back on God. Who is he? What is he going to do for your life? He will stabilize you. He will watch over you. He is the almighty one. And he's got you. He's got you. Hallelujah. So listen, God is not surprised or unprepared for today. He's not unprepared to be faithful to you. He's been knowing exactly where you would be today, and he's made every preparation for everything that you need for today and for tomorrow. He's prepared. Amen. Isn't that good? So we can put our trust in him. He is prepared. So shaking is when we're feeling insecure, right? We begin to feel unstable. We lose our happiness. It's not a good place to be, right? We get anxious, right? So for me, you know, I was talking about during those times that I wasn't doing well, I had this feeling of, I felt so powerless to change all the wrongs that I was hearing about. I felt so powerless to change them, you know? And I started to think about all the wrongs, everything that was wrong. Well, this is wrong, and that's wrong, and this wrong, and that's wrong, and that's not right. Blah, 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 blah. Instead of focusing on the power of God. And I just think if Jesus was here today, he'd say something like, don't let your hearts be troubled. Be of good cheer. This is what he actually said. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be of good cheer. Let not your hearts be troubled. Right? So he has already overcome the world. And since we belong to him, that means we're overcomers as well. And we don't have to be shaken and we don't have to be insecure when we pl place our trust and faith in the Lord and his mighty work that he's already done for us. That's a place of safety, that place of security, that place where we don't have to have anxiety that, uh, pr that plagues us in our life, right? So we need to um, get back to the Lord. And when I was going through those times, when I would go back to the Lord, I would go back to the scripture that he spoke to my heart. At the beginning of the pandemic, and when things started to get upside down in this world, he spoke a scripture to me. And so when I would start to get a little shaky, I'd go back to the scripture. And this is the scripture he spoke to my heart. You want to hear it? You do? Okay. <laughs> I'll share it with you then. <laughs> Romans 8, 28. And we know that, that's a great way to start, and we know. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Hallelujah. So when I would go back to that scripture, it would stabilize, stabilize my thinking, stabilize my faith, and I would be able to say, Yes, God, that's right. You're working everything out for my good. It doesn't matter what it looks like today. You're working. You're working it out for my good. That's your promise, and I believe you. 
And I want to tell you that God's doing the same thing for you. And if it doesn't look like it's turned around for your good yet, it's because God's not done working. There's not a period at the end of the sentence if God hasn't turned it around for your good yet. Keep trusting him. He said he would turn it around for your good. Hallelujah. That stabilizes our hearts. See, that stabilized my heart in the midst of all the turbulent times that we've been living in. We don't have to be shaken. That's the good news. We don't have to be shaken. Let's say it one more time. Stirred, not shaken. Hallelujah. So stirring happens a lot, okay? And stirring not only happens on a, in a godly way, but stirring can happen in ungodly ways too. Like people can be stirred to anger, you know, in a lot of ways. There's a lot of Bible examples of stirring that happen. For instance, a group of people followed, you know, the apostle Paul went, he took the message of Jesus to, and he was like the pioneer taking that message out from Jerusalem to all these different areas around. He was like the first, you know, like Christian missionary. And so he was going out with his team of people and he's declaring the good news that Jesus is the Messiah and salvation is a free gift. He's, you know, he's completed the covenant and shed his blood and you can be saved. And he's sharing the good news everywhere he goes. And this group of people are coming in because they don't want people to know the good news and they would stir people up. And they would riot or they would run Paul out of town. All kinds of different things. And actually that happened to Jesus one time too. After he talked about, you know, the anointing, the, the anointing is upon me for all of these wonderful things. And he was in the synagogue and sharing with these people. And they got offended and they tried to run him off a cliff. Because they got all stirred up, stirred up in fear and insecurity. So stirring can happen about the wrong things as well as the right things. The devil's always trying to stir up people against what God wants to do. But you know what? The devil is not winning. God is the one who's almighty. He is the one. Jesus is the one who's building his church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. That's good news, isn't it? Good news. So uh, stirring can be used, you know, and it is a powerful, powerful thing. You get that mob thing going on. It is super powerful for evil, but God is more powerful and his kingdom is reigning over all. The gifts that are in you are powerful and you're part of the winning team. I want you to know that. You're part of the winning team. Doesn't matter what it looks like out there. You're part of the winning team. Hallelujah. Your, your gifts are needed. Your gifts are powerful. Powerful. Hallelujah. So, you know, every day we have opportunities to be stirred about things. When you see a cute puppy... I'm not even a dog person. But when I see a cute puppy, I think, oh, maybe I need one of those in my life. <laughs> right? We get stirred. We want a puppy. Angel. <laughs> You're a puppy person, right? <laughs> when your favorite team wins, right? You're stirred. You're like, yeah! I was stirred to a shout, right? There's a stirring. That's an emotional stirring, right? You might hear a news report. You're like, I'm going to write my senator. I'm going to write my member of Congress, right? You get stirred about something. The Bible says a harsh word stirs up anger. Stirring. An encouraging word stirs up confidence. We want to be on that side, don't we? So there's a lot of stirring going on, right? So let's say it again. Stirred, Stirred. not shaken. So the fire that's in us, I don't want to just tell you to stir it up. I want to help you know how that happens because you just know it needs to be done, but you don't know how to do it. It's like telling me to fix a car. You need to fix the car. Yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> you know, that's not good. So the fire in us, the gifts on the inside of us are stirred by what we think, what we believe, and what we do. So the process is really the same, good or evil. So evil people can manipulate and stir up people to evil by getting them to think something, believe something, and do something. But when we, what's more powerful is that the gifts on the inside of us, when we implement the same three things, we agree with God. And when we agree with God, something supernatural happens. Then those billows come out and blowing all that ashy dust off of the embers that are underneath. Then a little kindling gets put on that fire. And it begins to flame up because we agree with God and his power goes to work in our life to reignite the gifts that are on the inside of us. So what we meditate on, this is super powerful, what we meditate on causes the fire to burn. So I'm mad all the time. What are you meditating on? I can't control my desires. What are you meditating on? Whatever we meditate on will cause the fire to burn. And that's why it's so important that we guard our heart and what, why we edit what comes into our lives. We need to edit what we're letting in so that the right kind of fire burns. In Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25, it says, Let us consider one another in order to stir up love, and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Hallelujah. So we're supposed to be stirring up one another to love and good works, stirring one another up. So, I mean, how many of you have been stirred up by hearing somebody's testimony? Yeah, yeah, me too. How about uh, just by our praise and worship that we have in here? Yes, yes, absolutely. And, you know, or just hearing a preaching and a message, and you, it stirs up something on the inside of you. The gifts on the inside of us get fanned when we get in a place of anointing where the Holy Spirit is moving. I know a couple who they have a, a gift of giving, a special gift of giving. And I saw this happen in their lives, that they were part of a church. Initially, it was good. Um, and their gifts, they were like, yeah, in touch with the calling, you know, that was on the inside of them. And, but over time, uh, it became like an unhealthy place, and God was moving them. And so they had to leave that church and went and found another church where the word of God was flowing. And as soon as they got there, the gift of giving and their calling was reignited. Not that they were even preaching on it, but just being in a place where the word of God was exalted and the Holy Spirit could move, it ignited that gift in them. And that happens with you and me too. When we get in a place where the word is preached, boy, it just calls to us. It calls to us. And maybe this, the message is not even on what we're feeling on the inside, but it's like the Holy Spirit's got a side conversation going on with us based on our calling like, oh, we're preaching over here on this, but the Holy Spirit's saying, tug, tug, tug over here, you know, tug to do this particular thing or to get involved in something in particular. So that's how our gifts get stirred, and it's super powerful. So what gifts could be on the inside of you? Hmm. Sometimes we have this big question mark in our life, like, I, I understand the concept, but I don't know what my gifts are, right? I'll give you a little list of a few that are in the Bible. 
here's a, a few. These are from 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12. Prophecy, serving, teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, mercy. Do you know mercy is a gift? It's divine. Hallelujah. Hospitality. Listen, I've seen people, ah, it's such a joy to me to see the grace of God in people's lives, how diverse it is, that manifold grace of God, many, many faceted grace of God and how it flows out of people. I've seen people with a grace for jail ministry, that when they get in that situation, something flows out of them. You could put them in another place and they do okay. But you get them in that place, whew, it floods out of them. There's a, a divine flow that happens. There's a gifting on the inside of them. Some people are graced in missions, right? And other people don't want to go out of the country. They're like, why would I ever go anywhere else? This is where I want to be. But other people, when they get outside of the borders, something supernatural happens. Something, some divine flow starts coming out of them that didn't come out of them in another situation. So the gifts that God has put in his people are so diverse. So there are some gifts that, you know, are specific, not necessarily unique, like you're not maybe the only one with that gift, but maybe the person beside you doesn't have it because God, you know, doles them out. Whew doles them out to who he wants. And then there's other things that we all have. Another place the Apostle Paul said, Timothy, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but he has given you power and love and a sound mind. Amen. Guess what? We all have those. We all have the power of God. We all have the love of God. And we all have the wisdom of God if we stir those things up on the inside of us. So how... Did Paul tell Timothy to stir up the gift? Well, he reminded him, stir it up. And that meant Timothy had the power to do it. You know, sometimes we're like, <laughs> and not necessarily a bad thing, but this is not this particular scripture. Sometimes we're like, God, stir up the gift in me. But Paul said, Timothy, stir, you stir up the gift. You stir it up. You stir it up. That means it's something that we can do. We don't have to be passive and wait for some special moving of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is here. He is touching your lives today. He is doing something in you today. And one of the things he's doing is saying to you, stir up the gift that is in you. So how do we do that? Well, I told you before that as you meditate, the fire burns. So we need to think about gifts on the inside of us. Take some time and think about it. Thank God. I have gifts. I have callings. And you know what? I want you to know something. If you haven't been using the gifts that maybe you used to use, I want you to know something. They're still there. God doesn't take them back. The gifts and calling of God, the scripture says, are irrevocable. So whatever he put in you, oh, it's still there. You just need to get the billows out, blow all that dust off, and begin to see that, that the embers glowing again, right? Okay, so think about the gifts Thank God for the gifts. That's just that's like a step of faith, right? Thank you, God, that I have gifts from you in my life. Thank you. Thank you that you entrusted to me gifts that you want me to use. Thank you, Lord. Value the gifts. Sometimes we value other things in our life above the calling of God. And step out and use the gifts. That's the next thing. Step out and use the gifts. Get yourself in a place where the gifts can flow. Hallelujah. Don't just sit on the sidelines. God has a great work for his church to do in this day. 
Hallelujah. And he wants his body to be stirred, not shaken. Can we say it again? Stirred, not shaken. We're not going to be shaken by the things that are going on in this world, right? We're going to keep our feet and our heart grounded in the word of God so that we're strong and stable and we're able to stir up the gift that's on the inside of us. And that's what God wants for his church to be. Can you see the body of Christ rising up? in a strong and stable place and saying, I will not be shaken. Hallelujah. I am stirred up for the plan of God. I'm stirred up for the calling of God. I'm stirred up to follow God, to use my gifts and to be a blessing everywhere I go. Can you see it? Can you see it? We're going to be stirred, not shaken, right? That's what God wants for his church today. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. I'm going to, uh, I'll lead you in a prayer. How about we do it that way? Sometimes we don't know how to approach, you know, the, the, you know, how to take that next step. But I want to pray with you about the gifts that are in you. Let's take a moment and think about how has God used you in the past? When have you seen blessing come to people through you? What has flowed through you to other people? And you might be thinking, "Mm, I don't know that I've ever had that happen. It's okay. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And if you have never received Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life yet... We're also going to give you an opportunity for that because first you have to have a gift and it's from God and you have to be connected through Jesus Christ in order for that to happen. Hallelujah. So gifts. You know, sometimes people have been used in one way in the past and they think, oh, that was then. Mm, It was kind of an exciting time, but it's not happening now. But it can. It can just need to stir it up. So let's pray. Let's pray today. Hallelujah. You can just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for trusting me with the gifts of, that you put in my life. God, I want him to be stirred up. And I set my heart to stir the gifts up. I'm not going to sit on the sidelines. I'm going to be a blessing in this world. I ask you to use me to be a blessing. Use me to further your kingdom. Use me as a vessel of healing to those around me. Father, thank you Thank you, thank you for the gifts that are on the inside of me. I stir them up, Lord, and I thank you for the wonderful days ahead. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. I just believe God is moving in your lives. He's showing you things. He's opening your eyes to things that had been kind of dim in the past. And they're brightening up. And you're beginning to see some things that you hadn't seen before. I believe you're going out of here different than you came in here today. Now, I want to say this. I want to give the opportunity to anybody in this room who's not yet received Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. When Jesus was here, he said, you must be born again. In other words, you must get a new life. Start a new life. And the way we do that is by believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for our sins on the cross, that he was buried and raised the third day. He has ascended into heaven, and he's alive today. Even though we can't see him with our physical eyes, we know him with our heart. He is alive, and he's coming again. He's coming again for his church, 
and he's coming again, and we need to be ready, right? And so if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by believing in him, then today is your day, and we can pray a prayer, and you can receive him into your heart and start a brand new life in relationship with God. You can start a life as a child of God with gifts from God. Hallelujah. This is your opportunity. And so I want to ask this this morning, if you're in this room and you're ready to receive Jesus Christ today, you're ready to start your walk with God, then I'm going to ask you in just a minute to raise your hand so I know who I'm praying with. Just bless our hearts so much to know that God has touched your heart today and that you're uh, choosing today to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. So if you're doing that today or if you're online, there will be a a raise your hand button that you can push and let the host know that you're receiving Jesus Christ today as the Lord of your life. So on the count of three, uh, just raise your hand and we'll rejoice with you and we'll all pray together and you can receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. One, two, three. Just raise your hand anywhere in the room. Hallelujah. We're rejoicing at everyone who receives the Lord today. Hallelujah. All right, let's pray together. Dear God in heaven, I believe that you sent Jesus to be my Savior. I believe he's your son. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he was raised on the third day. And that you made him Lord. Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Come into my life. Make me new and help me live for you. Thank you that I'm now a child of God. And God, you're my Father, and I'm your child. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So thank you for listening to me today and helping me with the message. Hallelujah.